Hi, I'm Adrian Clark, Shortlist Style Director, and I'm here to answer all of your grooming and fashion dilemmas. This week, I had somebody contact me who asked me basically quite, quite a difficult situation to kind of work around, but that he travels a lot for business um, and has to go straight into meetings immediately from a plane or within the hour of getting off of a plane. He's going to be traveling back the same evening and obviously isn't staying in a hotel or doesn't have accommodation where he can chill for a bit and, and, and organize his wardrobe and make himself look good for the day. How does he get there looking good and fresh and not like he's been on a, a two and a half hour flight into Europe? One of the most important things to remember is the quality of suit that you actually travel in. There are lots of suits that are actually very, very much crease free these days because there are lots of fibres now which mix some synthetic fibre in them to stop them creasing too much on the plane. Always take your jacket off obviously before you sit on the plane, give to the air stewardess or steward and ask them to look after it for you because, you know, that's what they're there for and basically if you, if you sit in your jacket, you're, you're going to find quite heavy creases that you're not going to be able to uh, get rid of. The one thing I would insist that you always do when you arrive at the airport, even if you're not staying in a hotel, to use the bathroom in the airport is to change your shirt. Because whatever I tell you, you're never going to be able to sustain a crease-free shirt on a flight. So always take a shirt with you and a tie. Don't wear the tie for actually, actually for the travelling um, part of the journey. Um, and change into the, to the fresh shirt and, and I'm going to show you now how to keep a shirt as crease free as is possible basically in a bag. You take your shirt at home, you make sure it is done up on all buttons so don't leave any button undone all the way down And then vital, a lot of shirts have these tabs, which are there for a good reason. These are here to keep the collar as flat and as sharp as possible. You can get these collar, um, I don't know, they, they don't really have a name. I call them collar tabs, um, to put into the collar from any shirt manufacturer. Put those in and they will help to actually keep it stiffened and to stop it, the, 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 the collar itself turning over. Another little trick that I learnt was if you take a piece of cardboard, much the same as when you buy a shirt um, in packaging, I usually just use the inside of a carrier bag, as you can see with the holes there where the, where the cord went through. Inside a paper carrier bag you will always find they put these cardboard stiffeners to help the bag from ripping, but that, they're also very, very useful for this job. So what you do is you just wrap one of those rounds and fold the collar back on it, which then will create a kind of a, a, a solid brace, as it were, for, for the actual collar to sit within, making it very much more easy to travel which will help to keep a more solid shape to the actual collar, as is there. Then when it comes to folding a shirt, a lot of men get this completely wrong. I found the best way to do it is turn it on its front and then take something like, this is just like an old work folder that had paper, paperwork in it. You can use a magazine, a book, anything that's approximately this kind of size and shape and then you fold in from one side using this as almost like a template. Cre folding the, um, the shirt sleeve at the elbow. You do the same on the other side. Bending it in where you would normally bend your arm. Because it's folding where your elbow is going to fold anyway, that's a natural crease, so it won't be in an unsightly area of the sleeve. And then fold upwards on itself. 
If you then turn the shirt over, you will get almost a perfect shirt shape. Taking the folder out, then I recommend folding over two or three times. And there you have, as near as can be possible, as crease-free as, uh, as a shirt you'll be able to get if, you just, if you're packing it in a bag. For the tie, really important thing to mention is obviously you don't want to get too many creases in a tie, especially if it's lightweight. The best way to store a tie in a bag is to physically take three fingers worth of width and roll it in a spiral. which then this shape should not stop the creases happening. But then what you can actually do is if you pad the collar of the shirt, you're actually creating even more um, stability for the collar itself. That then in the top of the bag should leave you, if you, if you change into that one, as I say, once you arrive at, the, uh, at your destination and you can just change in the bathroom of, of, of the, the airport before going on to your meeting, that should leave you um, looking as fresh as a daisy, or if not so, as near as, as, near as damn it. That is um, my advice today. Um, if there is anything else I can help you with, any other dilemmas, any other situations, What's the difference between black and white tie? What's, when, when, what sort of sock should I wear with the shorter length trouser that's on trend at the moment? Please do tweet me at Shortlist Magazine. Thank you.